someone wrote into my show, said, Michael, if you could meet the devil, I said, I don't know, I probably have met the devil a few times, don't, don't wish I... Met him twice. You've met him twice? Personally. How'd that go? Not well the first time, because <laughs> I, was, I wasn't even a seminarian, I was discerning. I just came out of my life of sin. Um, I had a, I joined Our Lady of Victory, like I mentioned, and this little old um, Polish priest who became my spiritual director. And um, I remember one day I went in and I said, you know, this job is killing me because, well, I, it was a sales position. I was entertaining big shots at all fancy restaurants every night, drinking, drinking, drinking. I said, I, I can't balance this with trying to live this new life. It's not working. So he said to me, well, let's do this. Why don't you, um, for the next month, uh, you can go call ahead or go to, go to the meet to the restaurant early and tell the bartender when you order a drink that it, it would be just club soda, no vodka. But you would order it publicly and then they won't know. I said, I can do that. So he said, no alcohol for a month. So it's the middle of the day. It's like noon. I come out of the church and there's this, again, this beautiful, handsome man custom tailored suit and he's staring at me which if you've ever lived in new york you don't stare at people it's pretty unusual it, it very like you put your eye you don't yeah it's a, it's almost an attack like this i'm being attacked now yeah. i have to fight and i just was like weird so i turned to walk towards my office and he runs up next to me and he grabs me by the arm again no guys do that no guy grabs somebody by the arm and is like escorting them and he goes, let's get a drink. And I just had chills go up and down my body. And I said, get away from me. And then I turned direction and went towards my apartment because it was closer. And I got to my apartment and I walked through the doors and the doors closed behind me. And I looked out and he was just laughing at me. And it was like, Phew. so he leaves and I run back to the church. I go, father, let me tell you what just happened. What do you think happened here? What is this? He goes, I told you, you're going to have a target on your back, so you got to be careful. And I said, was that who I think it was? And he goes, mm, sounds like it. <laughs> Certainly it seems that way. I mean, that, that was just no random person for sure. So that, that, and that really, it's frightened me, to be honest. I was like, that. I didn't sign up for this at all. And then a few years later, I was on a, a vacation visiting an old banker friend down in Miami. And... Uh, she set up a whole luncheon at this place called Nikki Beach, which really isn't appropriate for seminarians or priests. Yeah. It's very, again, it's the glitterati, the high-powered, wealthy people. It's bottle service on the beach. Right, right. And I'm just like, oh, this is, well, I don't know how I feel about this. And the, the, the two girls to my right, I knew both of them. Sandra was hosting, and I, my ex-boss, um, Christine, was with me. And they start looking at this guy across over by the other end of the deck, like, oh my God, look at that guy. He's so handsome. My guy's beautiful. And all of a sudden, Sandra's like, oh, he's coming over here. And I turn and I look and it's him. It's, <laughs> it's, the, guy, it's the one that, that wanted to get the drink. Only now he's like shirtless in a bathing suit and he walks up and he goes, what are you doing here? I thought you were going to be a priest. And he goes, this is my territory. You shouldn't be here. And both the girls got flipped out they were like they, they had the the scare mechanism like the face that i'm making right now yeah literally like you know danger will robinson and christine's like get the check and she threw money down. she's like we're out of here and we left but like when those things happen god allowed it yeah. right so for me i felt like i wasn't supposed to be there and god was letting me know you have no place going to places like that anymore don't do that again right the devil, whether he wants to be or not, it can be a tool of absolutely, God. <laughs> you know absolutely. I mean? He's not more powerful than God. He's nowhere near as powerful as God, and his his uh, his own will will be foiled in God's providence ultimately. But and the fact that you you had these friends there who saw it, who reacted that way, who can attest to it. It wasn't just you had a daydream or something. No, they they were visibly shaken, and to this day they talk about it and they get spooked just talking about it. I don't know. When I say maybe I've met the devil, I mean, you know, I've engaged in all sorts of sins. I don't know that I've ever actually met the devil, I, but I'm pretty convinced I've met angels. I'm, I'm quite convinced of that. And I, it, also in New York, 
There's a lot. New York is a spiritually rich place, I guess. <laughs> but improbable kinds of meetings. Of str- Again, in New York, strangers don't come up to you. They don't look at you. They don't. Striking up conversations in the strangest of places. I mean, I, I sometimes fear when I tell these stories that it's like when you wake up and you tell your wife about the dream you just had and she goes back to sleep before you get the first sentence out because it's so boring. It's very interesting to the people who have the experiences, but you know, unless there is shocking as, as you were too with uh, the old devil. But when those experiences happen, you meet someone, strike up a conversation. There was one guy, all right, I'll get into it. There was one guy, I was really down in the dumps. I was working in politics and show business, as I guess I still am. And, but you know, I was just right out of college. I was, I was, I was back in this re- reversion moment. It was really spiritually rich. There was a lot of temptation and sin, and there was a lot of shocking grace and kind of numinous experience. And, but I was kind of down in the dumps because I'm, this, I'm, I'm not doing great in my career. I just got out of school. I, don't, I went from being the big man on campus to being some nobody guy in New York. And uh, I'm on the subway on, on the sixth train. Mm-hmm. And I, I, I forget exactly which direction it was, but it was either I got on or either this happened at 28th Street going uptown or 33rd Street going downtown. Okay. And I'm on the train. And this kind of funny looking black guy and this lady walk onto the train and they're clearly together. They go, you know, she's standing over here and then this guy sits down right next to me and I'm just trying to read my Kindle. So he's just looking at me, just looking at me. He says, hey, who are you? It's like, huh? Oh, I'm Michael. He was like, oh, my name's Michael too. Oh. We're angels. <laughs> and I said, and I, had just, I had just come back into leaving in God and the church and everything. I said, oh, yeah, how about that? He goes, he goes, so what do you do? I said, oh, you know, I work in politics and show business. Or so, you know, essentially unemployed. You know, that's not, that's not the, I said, no, not, I'm not doing very much. So, yeah. Don't worry about that. You'll be great. Train comes to a stop. He stands up. Walks off the train. Doesn't even look at the woman he walked on the train with. And the, the thing that's so weird about this, and you will know this as a New Yorker, is on that train, 28th Street to 33rd Street, it's five blocks. Yeah. Nobody in New York is going to take the subway to go from 28th Street to 33rd Street to 33rd Street to 28th Street. Nobody's going to take the that's sixth true. train to go five yeah. blocks. You, you would take it to go 33rd Street to Brooklyn Bridge. Yeah. You would take it to... But no, that's, that's one of the shortest intervals, probably maybe the shortest in the New yeah. York City subway. No one's doing that. And I thought, look, it's such a minor trivial, I, but I can't. It's a good point, though. I couldn't explain it. And I thought, and then I just thought, well, what does that mean? What does that mean? What am I supposed to take from that? A little support. That's what I took from it. All I thought was just God saying, a little shot hey, I'm arm. here. I'm here. You know, <laughs> it's just sort of like. Hey, buddy. <laughs> Boo. You know? Yeah. I'll tell you something, though, about people who believe and people who don't believe. Um, I think if you go through life when these little things happen, believing, for the most part, believe everything, right? Yeah. What's the harm? Is it going to harm you? No. But it actually makes you live a more um, uplifted, happy life than somebody who goes through the whole life believing nothing. Because that's a horrible way to live, to believe nothing is happening. It's almost like um, there's two strains of thought about how you interact with the world, especially in New York. Yep. You can believe everybody's out to get you, <laughs> and occasionally somebody's nice, or you can believe everybody's basically nice and occasionally they fail you. Yeah. It's so much better to live thinking everybody's basically pretty good and one or two people are going to get you, and it's, okay, I'll deal with it. Yeah. But to think everybody's out to get you, then every moment of your life is in, it, is in defense and attack mode. That's no way to live. Yeah. I know people that their marriages are like that. Like they're in a marriage where they feel like they're in a battle all the time. And I'm like, yeah, I do. It's not gonna, you're not going to make it. You yeah. can't go that long in that really kind of a stressful zone without somebody giving up. 